Hello everyone here. This is Ethan Lee from Think Academy Singapore. Today we are going to talk about ratio in distance word problems. So distance word problem is a very popular test point in every year's NIMA special round. So 2022 there are three questions about it, and 2019, 2018, uh, every year there are two or three questions. So it's very important to master the way to solve this type of problem. So yeah, the key point to so many difficult question is just to use the ratio. So we know that in the distance world problem, there are three different things. One is we call the distance, which is represented by the letter S, and speed, which is the most important thing. We use a letter V to represent it. And finally, the time, which is a t here. So now we know the relationship between these three stuff as distance is speed times time, and speed is distance divided by time, right? So yeah, the ratio connection between this is that if one of the three things remains unchanged, then the other two values will have a ratio relationship. For example, yeah, if the total distance remains unchanged, then the speed and time will have a reversed ratio. For example, two people, yeah, the speed ratio is five to four. Then the time it takes should be four to five. However, if the time remains unchanged in the same time, and the distance one traveled and the speed one have will have the same ratio. So if two people had a speed ratio of five to four, then the distance traveled will just be five to four. So yeah, this is the ratio. So if we know the ratio of speed, we can get ratio of distance or ratio of time and vice versa. As we have mentioned that. If you want to use the ratio, we need that one of its value remains unchanged or remains the same. So, yeah, in the question, if we find a same time or same distance, so by then we can use the ratio thinking way. So we may try to find the ratio of speed or ratio of distance and get the other stuff. So the most Important thing is about the same time question. So it's a meeting that comes. So if we're talking about some two people start together and meet together, right? So they start together, meeting together. So they will take the same time on travel. So the time is the same. Then when two guys meet, the ratio of speed will equal to the ratio of distance. And the other type of question is maybe about one car travel the same distance use two different type of speed. So yeah, the first time may be the original speed, and the second time may be a twenty percent acceleration. And then yeah, it would make it faster, and the time is shorter, and the time ratio would be maybe yeah what one hundred percent and eighty percent. So it's a four over five, right? So let's see that how the real question asked in the numerous question. So the first question comes from the twenty eighteen. Yeah, it's a five point question. So there are two guys P and Q, right? So P was cycling faster than Q by fifty percent. So which means the speed ratio would be three over two, right? So this is the original. And after the mid, so Peter increased speed by twenty percent, so which makes it to be three point six. And Queen accelerated one third, so which makes it to be eight over three, right? So this is the later speed. So we get a new ratio, and then we may time a fifteen to get it all become an integer here. So this would be, yeah, maybe a fifteen here. So make it to be, and it's a forty, right? So then is a twenty-seven over twenty. 
So the original speed is three to two, and the later speed ratio is twenty-seven to twenty. So then, let's see what happens. So first of all, they meet together. So when they meet, right? So when they meet, meeting is a same time process. So when they meet, the ratio of distance should just be equal to the ratio of speed. So maybe we may have see the ratio of speed is three to two. Then the ratio of distance should also be three to two. So just make AC to be three U, then BC to be two U. Okay, then yeah, this is the first time, and then they continue walking, and then we see that Peter has traveled for BC. So there are two U here. So now the first question comes. So how long will Queenie travel at the same time? Again, the ratio of distance equals the ratio of speed. So the ratio of speed is twenty-seven over twenty. So maybe there is a D here. Then we can get C D to be the distance traveled by P and times the ratio, so which makes it to be forty over twenty-seven units, right? And we know that A C is a three unit. Then we have A D should be equal to three. Minus forty over twenty-seven, so it's a forty-one over twenty-seven units, and then we know that the distance of AD will equal to forty-one kilometers, which means one unit should be equal to twenty-seven kilometers, and the total distance is a five U. Then we use It times five, so the total distance would be one hundred and thirty-five kilometers. So in this question, we use the ratio twice, and in each step, we just use the ratio of speed to represent the ratio of distance. Then we have AC, BC, and CD. So we finally get the U and forty-one kilometers, and find the answers. Yeah, this is the easy one, and the more difficult one is last year, the twenty twenty-two problem. Now, yeah, this is maybe the most difficult distance world problem in recent years. So there, are, first of all, this is about water and boat, right? So in this question, the speed of a boat is influenced by the speed of current. So if a if a ship is traveling downstream, so its actual speed would be the original speed of the boat, aka the speed in still water plus. The speed of stream, speed of flow in in this in this question's word. So the speed of flow. Then yeah, if a boat is traveling upstreams, its actual speed would be its speed in still water minus the speed of flow. So this is how the speed of flow influences the speed of boat. Okay then, and there are two ships A and B here, right? And There's still in still water, their speed differs by exactly the same value as the water flow speed. So maybe we have the speed of A, B, and water or flow. If make flow to be a unit, and make the speed of B to be yeah, B is the A is the faster, B is the slower. Yeah, maybe A to B and X times U, so A should be X plus one times U, right? So this is the speed in still water. So then, yeah, let's look at questions. The question said that the faster train, right? The faster train will travel downstreams. So its actual speed should be X plus two U, and this will be X minus one U, right? So yeah, the in still water, they their speed differs from one u, and in the current, so their speed would differs as a three u here. And the faster is downstream, the slower is upstream, right? Okay, then let's see what we can find. So the A and B here are sorry, two hundred and seventy. 
And if they traveled as planned, they would meet in this place 19 kilometers away from B. So, which means that when they meet together, so the ship coming from A, the faster ship has traveled 180 kilometers, whereas the slow, slower ship traveled only 19 kilometers. Yeah, now we know that the, at the time they meet, we know the distance they have traveled. And as I have mentioned, we have the same time, right? So if the time is the same, then the ratio of distance will equal to the ratio of speed. So now we know the ratio of distance is 180 over 90 is a 2 to 1, right? So then we can find the speed would have the same ratio as 2 over 1. So then remove the u here, we can solve out the x. So the difference is a 3, and so 1, 1 represents a 3 here. So then x will equal to 4. Or you can use the production of the inner and outer terms. So make it to be x plus 1 equals to 2 times x minus 1, and get x will equal to 4. So I always OK. So we know, and now we get the ratio of speed here, right? OK, then, this is the planned travel, right? The scheduled one. but. However, in the real situation, the fast boat traveled only two hours, and it's broke. It's broken, and that by then it was carried over by the water flow. So, which means that in the first two hours, its speed is its original speed is a six u, right? So it's a six u. And then, after two hours, it can only travel for the water speed, which is an u here. The slower ship, however, it will keep the speed of 3u. So then, yeah, as a result, right, so we find that two ships meet at 135 kilometers from B instead. So, in the midpoint. Now, yeah, we should find the value of u here, right? So how to find it out? I will introduce it two ways. The first way is to use the algebra. So we just make, now we know the speed, right? We just need another letter root than the time. So maybe we can suggest the whole journey or the, the whole journey to be x plus 2. Yeah, maybe not x, maybe a t plus 2 hours. Why t plus 2? Because the first 2 hours and the later t hours are different. So it makes it easier to write the formula here, right? So now we can get, yeah, for the faster ship, it traveled at a 6u for 2 hour, and again, a u for t hour, which means it is a 135. and then for the slower ship, however, it will travel 3u times the t plus 1 will equal to 135 as well. So in the, yeah, in this algebra, so may, we may find it difficult to solve that there are u times t, right? So this is not a formula way. But yeah, there is a very easy way to just solve this out as we do not need to know the t, we just need to know the u. So maybe we just maybe cleanse the u times t a little bit, okay? So for in the latter part it will be written as 3u t plus 6u will equal to 135. Then there is one u t, there is 3 u t. So we just use the first formula times 3, and then minus the second formula. So we can, by then, cleanse the u times t. So which makes it just a 12 and 36. So this is minus 6, so it's 30 u, just equal to 270. So which makes 1 u equal to 9. Then u is the water speed, so answer is 9. 
So this is the way we use the algebra to finish it. But if you feel difficult to solve this formula, there is another way to solve this by using the average. So we can see that they meet at the midpoint, right? Which means the average speed of A and B should remain the same. And we know the average is a 3u. So maybe the faster ship travels 6u for first two hours, and then a u for the last several hours. Then the average should equal to 3u. So we can now find the ratio of time it travels in different process. So, yeah, 6u is greater than 3u for 3. So, which means in the first two hours, yeah, it travels more than 6, right? So, more 6u more than the average speed. So if the average speed is 3u, which means that in the latter journey, it will travel 6u less during the latter journey. So each hour, it travels 2u less, which means it will take 3 hours for it to get the same difference of distance. So which means that we can use the ratio here to solve out. Yeah, it traveled at 6u for 2 hours, then it should travel at u for 3 hours. That can make the average speed to be 3u. So which means that here the t will equal to 3, the whole journey will take 5 hours, and then we use 135 divided by 5 to get the speed of b, and then divided by another 3 to get the speed of u. So it's the average, we can also solve it out without using this algebra. Okay, now this is a very difficult question, and I hope you understand this. Okay, thank you for today, and see you tomorrow.